Hey again, everyone. I am going to um, show you or get a little bit more in depth today using the pen tool inside Adobe Illustrator. It's kind of going to be an extension from one of my other blog posts, how to vectorize a hand drawing, because we're going to use the same drawing. We're just going to go into a little bit more detail for those of you that need a little bit more help mastering the pen tool, which if you do, don't feel bad because it can take a while to really feel comfortable with it. I mean, it does take a while to feel comfortable with it and to know how to use it um, most effectively. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in our drawing again of our cute little fox. So I just did a f went to the file menu and down to place, and now I'm gonna click and drag my placed image across my artboard. My artboard that I'm using is eight and a half by 11, just because. Um, but remember the nice thing about Illustrator and creating vector artwork is it really doesn't matter what size you make it because you can resize it at any time without losing any quality. So, okay, so we have our hand drawing in here. Go ahead and place um, anything you want to practice on. Um, a digital image and I am going to lock it down like we did before so I'm going to use my arrow tool make sure my placed image is selected and then I'm going to do a control 2 um, that's just the keyboard shortcut for it or if you're on a Mac I think it's Apple 2 um, let's see there's probably a menu to edit um, no object you would go down here if you want to do it the long manual way, just lock it down. Now I wanted to specifically focus in on these acorns and the best way to create these as individual pieces so that you can go back and colorize them if you need to. So I'm just going to start and I'll try to talk as I go. We're going to select our pen tool. We're going to start drawing one. I'm just going to click and drag and click back on my last point. Click down and drag my, drag my batons. Click and drag. Go. Okay, so there's my first acorn, and I'm going to continue on to the next one. I'm not going to worry about um, colors or anything at this point. I just want to get my lines. And that one's done. Start another one. And as you can see, I'm actually drawing the full shape of the acorn instead of going following the line directly because we're gonna, we want the full shape and then we're gonna arrange because we can just arrange, rearrange the order what's on top of what we want each icon to, or each acorn piece to be its own object. So, but you can see now, <coughs> excuse me, if I select all these and I move them so I can see my picture behind, you can see this right acorn is on top, which it is. Um, but if I wanted to change that, well, yeah, we could send this to the back. So we can take an object and we can go to um, edit, no, object, arrange, and we can send it, sending it backward will send it back one object. Otherwise you can send it all the way to the back behind everything by using this one. So let's just do send backwards and there. Now my second acorn is on top. Um, and if we're staying true to the drawing, then we will bring this one back where it was to the front. So object, arrange, bring to front. Um, okay, so I'm just going to keep drawing so I can keep showing you. Let's do this one over here.
and now see this one obviously is behind so I'm going to click on my first acorn, acorn object and range bring it to the front um, and you know what let's just make these brown for the fun of it brown, not that brown but we'll keep the black outline okay so then I'm going to start with my other ones click and you don't have to be perfect up here because we're going to send it backwards anyway. So let's bring these two to the front. Ooh, wait, back up. Okay, so I clicked on one acorn. I held the shift key down <coughs> and clicked on the second acorn. So I have them both selected at the same time and up to object, arrange, bring to front. There we go. So if we view this in outlines, you can see we still have an individual object for each little piece of the acorn. So it is still fully editable. You can change individual colors and strokes for each one of those little things. So I'm just going to keep going just for fun because this is fun. Let's make sure this goes all the way up. So bring those to the front. Um, let's see. So now I'm starting um, to bring three objects to the front. Range, bring to front. There we go. Oh, let's bring those two. Once we start getting down here where we have oops, where we have multiple pieces, I could obviously cannot draw and talk at the same time. Okay. So in this case, and once we get even further down here, we don't want to be selecting 15 different pieces and you know bringing them all forward. Let's just take our one piece and send it um, to the back. Now, don't worry, it didn't disappear. It's just behind our, our placed image. So let's, um, let's make this a whole lot easier. And we are going to um, unlock our drawing that's in the background. There, I just unlocked it, object unlock. And then let's bring up our layer window. Window, layers, okay. So here's our layers. And right now, all of our artwork, our drawing, our placed image drawing, plus our brown acorn pieces that we drew are all on one layer. If I turn it off, everything disappears. So what I want to do, I'm going to make a new layer. New layer. Really easy. And I'm going to put, um, I'm going to label it placed image, just so I know. You can name it whatever you want, whatever makes sense to you. And now you can see when I placed on my uh, clicked on my place image, if I go over here to my layer palette, it's automatically went to layer one. So I want to put that on layer two um, because I labeled it that. So all you have to do is click um, this with you know have your placed image selected, touch and click and hold on this blue box and drag it up to your other layer. So now your fox is on one layer and your acorns are on the other layer. Now the final piece to this strategy is we need to, on our layers palette, we need to put our placed image layer down, drag, drag it, and drag it down to the bottom because we don't need to do anything with it. We want to see our artwork over top of it. So now we have our placed image on the bottom layer and we can lock it. The second box next to the eyeball lets you lock it. So now you can't mess it up, you can't move it. All you just have your artwork on your second layer. Let's label our second layer drawing. I just double clicked on there like that and you can edit that layer name. 
So now it's separated. And when I am going back to my pen tool, I'm going to draw another acorn. So now I selected that acorn. I'm going to go up to object, arrange, send to back there. Now we don't have to keep it won't keep getting lost behind our placed image because it's on its own separate layer. So here we go. Let's just finish this up. Select it, arrange, send it back. Oh, we got to draw a little placeholder back here. So now, if I draw my arms over top, like so, oh, I want to make that a little bit more defined. There we go. So there's my arm, you know, and I'm going to show you one more thing now that I just did this. Um, let's delete this and start our drawing again. Here we go. I want to show you how you close a path. So I'm going to draw my arm again. And then when we get to the end of our drawing here, you'll notice to close in this particular path or object that you just drew, you'll notice when you get close to this, where your starting point, your cursor, your little pen tool shows that little arrow or circle. And that just means that you want to hover over that starting point and when you see that arrow, or the circle, it's not an arrow, when you see that circle, it means you're on the right point. And if you click, then you have closed your object. So there's no missing points. And you know what? I did a really fast job in this, so I'm gonna show you, which doesn't matter because I can just come down here and fix it. I want this to be a nice smooth line. So in order to edit your path, that you drew, you want to use the filled in direct selection arrow tool and you just click on whatever point you want to fix. You can see when you hover over it, the little dot comes up like, yep, here's a point. So click on your point and then your handlebars show up again and you can edit and tweak them however you want. And let's just say, you know, I just can't quite get this curve the way I like it. I should have, in all honesty, maybe done it with another point in there. That's okay. You can add points within your drawing if you want to tweak things um, even more. You just need to go um, click and hold down on your pen tool icon, and then you get this list of four other options. And if you want to add a point somewhere in your path, you click the pen with the plus tool and you go back to your path. You have to make sure it's selected and you just click wherever you want to add points. And then you can fine tune, and smooth things out more, even more if you want. And the same thing, maybe you have too many points or maybe there's just, you know, maybe you did an auto trace and it's got way too many points on it. You want to clean it up. Uh, you can go in and you gotta hover right on top of it. Oh, I'm on the handlebar. Gotta zoom right in. So you can subtract points as well. Oh. Let's just 
gonna fix this because it's gonna bug me. There we go. Um, and then this last tool, the anchor point tool, lets you add um, curve to a point or lets you adjust the curve. So when it's this little slim looking arrow, if you click and hold on any point, it will give you new handlebars, which if the point already has curve to it, um, it kind of, in my opinion, just makes it worse and harder to work with. But you see, let's see, let's, let's pretend that, let me get my pen tool, and let's pretend that you made a, a straight line and then you are decided, oh, I really should have curved, curved that point. I don't want it straight like that. That's when you would go back, select your anchor point tool. You can click on this corner and then it curves it for you. It gives you handlebars. So that is a very good, useful tool to have too. I've used that many times. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit more clarity um, and direction on how to use the pen tool.